Okay. So here begins our journey in chapter two of the Morthagi area. I don't remember actually the name of the campaign. The previous one was like the, the something of Ulstrix. Anyhow, it hardly matters. We've got a fighter here, an aloof leader who's actually named after myself, uh, who is a warrior who has zealous leap as well as broad swipes. So they have the ability to deal extra damage to all foes within range and leap uh, as a free action occasionally in battle. We also have a Mystric who is a Naturalist Plus, who has a lot more options in Princess Grey here of what they get to control and what they get to specifically do. Sorry. What they get to specifically do for... So I've got brand stuck in my teeth. What they get to do specifically with natural things that they interfuse themselves into. Quite powerful. Uh, we've also got 3D Shaggy here who is uh, Interfuse. No, they are an Ignite Mystic. So they have the ability to set blazes to tiles with debris, Interfuse with it immediately, and then use it as a Interfused Flame. And then finally here, we have the fully skeletal Hothead Loner, Willow, who is a rogue. Does extra damage against targets with, uh, with uh, wounds already on them. Is vicious, does an extra damage as well. Uh, Silk steps into the Grey Plane whenever they kill an enemy, has plus 0.3 speed from one of the skeletal legs, has a new action in Bitter Scratch to be able to rake an enemy. Uh, so good. So does Willow now get a Skeletor voice? That is the voice that I have defaulted to. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Willow's voice will probably evolve over the course of this. I kind of do feel bad that I'm missing her kind of like really bad French. <laughs> uh, but at least we still have Princess Grey. Princess Grey's voice is like a lilting Welsh. And look, I'm not going to claim that I'm doing it perfectly, but I, I like it. I like it. And then Ryan's voice is my own, naturally. French Skeletor. Let's try and do bad French Skeletor. Let's see if that's possible. Uh, for the moment, though, we need to clear all Morthagi sites and find the source of the Morthagi. Seems like the source of Morthagi is down here. So we could go through Gwynwafeld and then try and come out this area. We'd have to build... No, we'd have to build a pass if we wanted to get across that mountainous range there. Same on that side as well. I do want to kind of loop to some of the upper areas as well. Clear all Morthagi sites and find the source of Morthagi. We have no limiting factor in terms of time specifically right now. So when Farm Cook wants to join the party. Uh, man. I'm trying to think of my, my mapping, and there's only two locations up here, but I think I will have to clear them, because this says Morthagi or Infesting the Styles. There's got to be a Morthagi side up there, which means like our path is up to Chan's Downs, out to Comet Down, and then through Farm Cook getting our recruiting opportunity coming down here. So we only have to build one bridge between Moonwax and Comet Down. I would highly advise to keep Willow alive at all costs. The curse makes them never grow old and hence never retire. How can they grow old? They're already fully aged. Age 36. That's, that's, look, that's, that's a typo. Uh, okay, let's go down to Chion's Downs. Send our scouting action out that way. We'll send everyone along in the party. Yeah, I'm not even going to send anyone to go for the recruit opportunity just yet. Yeah, Willow became skeletal. For anyone who missed it, uh, we have a little bit of your history. Uh, let's actually go through it. Let's read it. The story of uh, Willow. The chanting orchards seemed one morning to speak thrice. Willow. 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 Two weeks later, a child was born. This runic name, a birthmark on their shoulder. Failing at almost anything, everything rather, they pulled weeds and picked fights. However, a hopeful heart abided beneath the layers of misfortune. In penance for their own perceived faults, they lived to bring aid to the needy. Burdened with the oath of Old Wayne, an ancient dagger filled with cloying and malevolent influence, they decided to use the power of the dagger for the good of others. Though they remained themselves, the dagger would slowly corrupt and twist them over the years, estranging those who loved them and turning their body into a new and awful shape. 
By the time the old Wayne's dagger work was done, the heart no longer recognized Willow or the person they used to be. So we're no longer wielding a dagger. You're looking gear. We have no primary weapons or anything like that. We're not wielding the dagger because the dagger is part of our arm. Willow's right arm is bleached and bony, forever clutching the old Wayne dagger. It's just there now. Anyway, Willow's super cool. Let's fight the lurking Pathogi here. Strength five? Yeah, I should be able to deal with that. Uh, I'm going to assume that's Willow. How do I join those two voices? Huh. Yeah, pouring out there and lightning. You were right. But like for the French, so it's... It's pouring out there and lightning. You were right. <laughs> Stormy, Willow says. It's always like this this time of year. The way to Fern Hedge follows dead roads, long washed to chalkstone, wheel scars and memory. The uneven fields beyond this gorge get swampy, especially in the spring. Some know these highlands by their colloquial name, the Drowned Hills. Got this little cave though. That's what I want! Everyone packed in a cave, together! Wasn't here when I came this way. On a forceful gust, the rain comes chasing them. The rocks slicken, fragrant, and dark. Don't... <laughs> Don't have to get back in key for her voice as well. Don't overthink it. Don't be like me, come on. It's only a little or... Wait, how far back does it go? Goes further. Hold up a bit. Mmm, no animal smell. As they stoop out of the rain. <sighs> the world gives a tectonic shudder, and from outside, obliterating the rain noise, comes the clatter smash of dropping rocks. Wait a second. I think I accidentally skipped over. No. It's no time before they're buried in darkness, listening to the earth grumble and turn over. As things calm, gritty dust stings the eyes, stuffs the nose, smelling a fresh split bone. Huh. Well, a good thing we were inside. Oh, what was Shaggy's voice again? That'd be like a lame way to go, Scoop. Um, <laughs> God, I can't remember his voice. That would be a lame way to go. Oh, it was Everett. That would be a lame way to go. Shut up, but... Luckily, the lantern's not dead or wet. We're taking a longer look, I guess. Hey, has this worked, Stone? Yeah. Yeah, the, the wave walks. Oh, we got stairs down here. Truly, cut stairs. That is intriguing. And this is, uh... I mean, it looks random, but some other passage? I'll draw from there. Very cold. Stonework's old, but you can see it was done with care. The other passage smells fresher, but that air is freezing cold. Did we come here to explore suddenly? You, you have a point, but there's a risk in leaving mysteries underfoot. Clear out the entrance and move on. Follow the chilly passage. Take the ancient stairs. Gotta be the ancient stairs, right? Yeah, I don't know. Something down in these old stairs invites me down. Edges crumble, but the steps mostly hold their shape. Time is louder on a stairway than it seems anywhere else. Scuff by scrape, down they go, touch by touch by touch. Finally, the lantern casts flies out an echoing hall. This writing? It's Tharnic? Hmm, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, Tharnic. Huh. Well, it's a shame to step on here, or put a garish light on it. A stone behemoth guards the shadows. Damn it. Fnatic god of rivers, words, and rhyme. And also, justice? And I think just general wisdom. Sounds like a lot of responsibility. 
Dammit also showed up to ruin doomed marriages before they could begin. He was the enemy of all betrayers. Retired God Damut, truly a discovery I'll never forget. I should be sketching, recording. Is there time? How old do you suppose that book is? Ah, as old as the statue! I don't know, guess you're just going to grab it though! I don't like that voice for her, we'll work on it. Ryan bends for the book. It's been leaned unsacredly against the altar's foot, warping its spine. He opens it. One, one word on the first page. Gwanid. Snorik. It's, uh, you know how two or more casts of light that overlap become the same general radiance? That is Gwanid. Never knew you were all about this uh, ancient Naland. You're even reading it? That's, that was her original voice. Almost immediately, as Ryan utters that word, the whole mountain begins to sigh and starts sagging inward around the temple vault. Put it back! Yep. But replacing the book, the book rather, fails to hold the awful growing noise of the collapse. The steps they came down are buried in a fast growing boulder cloud. Are we dead? Don't give up. No, it's, um... Ah! Remember? If this did once serve as a temple, it should have a through door. The Tharnic religion emphasized passage, the going forwardness of... Yeah? Uh, wrong character. Yeah, what... Uh, is this it? That is a step? Better than standing around waiting to die. But how do I just leave? I'll never find such a place again. And what did it mean? Crunkle. I am, come on. <coughs> Amazingly stupid, Ryan. You left the lantern. Hmm, yeah, but I grabbed what I could. Well, I there's daylight, says uh, saying. Ahead, seems we got lucky. Uh, guess you really wanted that book, huh? Well, it's weird. I hey, you hear that? It's water noise. They'll emerge from the buried crossroads in the sight of Fern Urge. Edge, rather. Undetected amid the clatter chack of gears and bones. Ryan gets plus 0.5 points in this game. Ryan has two abilities that already scale with potency. Fnars Accordia! Increases this hero's max interfusions by one, and also allows non-mystics to interfuse. This is an offhand. 3D Shaggy's hands are full. We could give this to Princess Grey, be able to take control of another item at the same time. I think that's a totally reasonable thing to do here. The looping words within this book help a speaker make connections among the self, the things, and the spirits. In anyone's hands, it enables interfusion. Princess Grey is really good. She could totally do this. I think Ryan also has way too many actions to, you know, really afford to ever interfuse. Pop that book in the offhand. Now it's fight night. All heroes are beginning in Grey Plane. We've got stealth. Plus one foe card on turn three will be drawn. Two watchmen, one sommelier, and one welding. I mean, we're all in gray plane, so we should just take advanced positions as best we can, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're trying to set up on them. Hmm. Let's have a look at some of the items they have access to right now. Specifically the interfuse effects of them. So this workbench would be a barrage. Doesn't do a shred, but that does... On the high range, that can kill the Somal... Actually, on anything except for the low range, that kills the Somalier. This is also a hollow tree. Doesn't apparently... The hollow tree doesn't count as a tree. How... It, 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 think of me that one. The ambience in this game always throws me off. Really? I've had that occasionally just because I think it like it sounds like there's a buzzing in one of my ears sometimes, 
but also I'm hypersensitive to that because there is a buzzing in one of these ears a lot of the time. Um, so Willow, let's have a look at your bit of scratch. It's a swift action to bit a scratch. That's pretty ridiculous. Man. Um, Willow could actually go up and kill the Somalia and still just be fine. Go back into the gray plane after having done so. These stones all contain discus. That's some debris behind that watchman. So 3D, 3D can't get within range to do that just yet. It'll be like there. There's the range for 3D to be able to do that on the next turn immediately. What if the watchman moves? Almost certainly going to do so, but it leaves 3D in good position for a lot of other things. 3D, take your advance. It feels the welding. It's fine. Getting a little bit more information about that makes sense for us. I also like the idea of trying to send Willow far out on the flank. Maybe it's too far, though. Because I want to be able to, like, they should move down in this position-ish so that Willow can then fold back around them. But if I move this far, then I'm way too far from the Watchmen. So something like here? Okay, and then Princess. You also care about taking a pretty advanced position. We'll go there. And then Ryan, honestly, just want to get reasonably far forward. Wow, that watchman moved really far away. Nice. Well, so we're not going to have Willow uh, capable of folding in back that way, but... Willow, I'm pretty sure you can just kill that welding right now. Yeah, you reveal that watchman but we'll use a bit of scratch as a free action to shred one armor from you. And then I'm just gonna attack you. 79% chance, kill you, and that immediately puts us back into gray plane, welding taken off the field. Uh, that's Watchman. Oh my God, you, you dummy. That Watchman is now standing atop a fire, so I can just light the fire underneath them. Ignite. And then I can also fire leash that fire to a different position. Uh, unfortunately, none of those are close enough to the sommelier to deal damage, necessarily. Do I have anything else I can do? Roots and shoots. Grow five plants in the area. Plants grow on possible tiles. Um, oh, I could vine wrench them across. Is this a tree? No, that's a dead tree. This does count as a tree, but the vine wrench is three range, so I wouldn't be able to do it far enough. I could wild grasp five. Uh, actually, that's it. So we'll interfuse with this tree, which actually puts us back into the gray plane. Then we'll use Wild Grasp to pull the Somalia in. And now it's dead. Okay, it didn't matter. <laughs> well, look, it was going to be really clever when I sent that fire down to kill a Somalia. Okay, it was going to be really clever. Yeah, just take, take a pretty advanced position. Uh, that'll do. There is a tree at the back. I could use tree call if I was close enough. So sure, princess, take an advanced position as well. Yeah, left ourselves behind a lot of cover there, making it less likely we were going to take damage on the hit back. Oh, Spectic, cool. Uh, Willow, why don't you demonstrate why you are not to be messed with? by just ruining this guy's day. <laughs> just absolutely styling on him. Okay. Okay. Princess moves up here, interfuses with the sapling in the distance uses tree call to instantly summon an ally to a space next to the interfuse tree on 3D. 3D now teleports up there immediately. Hmm. 
might have been a dumb idea. It's a smart idea if I can get the kill this turn, but why did I... I could have just... Anyway. Let's not focus on the mistakes I made. Let's focus on the uh, the, the ways I can um, unmake those mistakes. Hmm. Discus from any of these areas doesn't seem that great. I'm going to use... Ignite on that space, use Fire Leash on that. Wait. Excuse me? Fire Leash on that fire. It's reselecting it as the move action? Oh, it's the only fire on the field, so it doesn't matter where I put it. That's fine. That's an attack from the wrong direction, but the Watchman wakes up next turn, and if they... Fine. If they somehow lived, they were just going to die to the fire next turn. Welcome back, Starlight. 3D Shoggy still hasn't got that second level, unfortunately. Travel Trap. This is the same as what Willow currently has. I really, really, really wish that I hadn't uh, invested so much into getting Willow's tattered skin remnants. We'll take the fabric out of this. Moon Willow Ring. Speed matters a lot on uh, characters that intend to flank, like Willow. Uh... <laughs> Actually pretty happy with that. Multhagi has now added Batchby. I do not have the ability to cancel that. I have cancelled that in the past, so it's now just coming back to roost. And secure this location, finding an item in doing so. Stop humming, eardrum, please. Uh, three heartwoods from that one, and warding, 0 0.8. Uh, I mean, Princess Shoggy is already pretty well protected. Ah, except you can't get a Spectral Lantern in your offhand, which would be two warding, whereas 3D Shoggy can as soon as we get him a staff, so I give it to the Princess. And then we loop back to Comet down. Well, hang on. Uh, no, we go to Moonwax, actually. Cancel everyone's movement. Uh, we'll get everyone to gather at Moonwax and then build the bridge across. That's going to be a pretty important bridge, possibly later. Recruit first. Well, I was going to go through this tile and then recruit on my way back down to try and be as efficient as I can. Uh, build that river bridge. Build a bridge so we can get over it. Donka. Stop whining. Oh, that electrostatic wine is really, really bad right now. A solid tap seems to have stopped it. That was a recommendation I keep seeing online. Just do one solid tap. I try it so many times. Just randomly beating up the headphones effectively. Uh, Draven, Morthagi, Spectix getting extra health. They are currently within single hit kill range. Changing that's pretty bad. Ah, uh, that. I'm gonna turn that up. Good job. Turns the same actions though. Come it down has been revealed. It's time to fight these Morthagi. Just immediately into the attack? Nope. Silver and Shadows by Douglas Austin. The sun's fallen, and a silver fog floats from the trees where the shadows pull. Ryan, can you slow down? We're all getting lost in this stuff. It's thickening. Huh? I might remember a gloom like this. You? 
Listen, the Twilight Birds are silent. A quiet forms a fence around them, impenetrable, a whirling air almost utterly opaque. Now I'm worried. Princess, Willow! You trust me, don't you? Let's get to those trees. At least those are solid. They halt just inside the shelter of the pines, the dark air clinging wet, the trunks they press to dampen their palms. Being lost with you isn't so bad. Hmm. And then something vast moves behind them. Slow. Achingly slow. It passes. Too enormous to be seen. Impossibly silent. You are right. We're all right. We've seen that bad boy before. Night's fallen. The fog wanders away, clinging to the felty outline of that gargantuan shadow. Let's find the others. Maybe they saw it better too. Uh, sorry, maybe they saw it too. Maybe they saw it better. I'd rather us take a look now. Trails go cold, quick in the dark. We're a leader. Let's do it. We'll be safe. Anyway, didn't think I'd have to convince you. All right then, together. That night, emptied of silence, fills again with noise, crickets and owls and scuttling ferrets. Approximating where the giant had passed, they search. There are no footprints. Or are there? Pools of green light are spaced along between the unbroken pine trunks, perhaps at a distance to match the hu thing's huge strides. Even as they watch, the light pools rapidly shrink into the ground, drying, sinking, perhaps fading just like starlight. Ryan runs to stoop over one of these and scrapes the earth away with the tip of his spear. Careful! He plucks a growing seed from the ground as it tries to burrow deeper. It slips his grasp, but then floats, settling in the air. Shh, 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 shh. I think there's bone dogs on the prowl. Snatching the seed, Ryan secures it in his pocket. Uh, this is shouting distance, right? It's certainly worth a try. Princess! Willow! Their friends find them, but so do their enemies. Uh, so we've had that event in the previous campaign. I thought it was going to be a, uh, a like a, a secondary version of that event, but it seems to be the same version of that event. We're going to have a tree spirit, friend. Uh, all heroes walling provides no armor this combat. Oh, water spirit. Uh, what is the water stunt bonus? The water stunt bonus is like take an extra turn or something stupid like that, isn't it? What? What would it do? To Willow. Willow doesn't have a weapon. Yeah, it refunds an AP. Yes. Yes. But but Willow doesn't have a weapon at all? So would it upgrade the dagger in her hand? Surely not. It doesn't count as a weapon. Willow will only have the legacy point option. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so we definitely avoid that. Um, so here's the thing. I kind of want Princess to get it. Maybe? Ryan, what's your weapon? Yeah, yeah, that's the stone shaper's axe. We could upgrade your spear. Uh, spear's pretty good. Spear's pretty good to get an upgrade on. Have access to water spears the rest of the game. Hmm. It's actually quite good. I'm, I'm gradually convincing myself that's the play. In which case, Ryan probably just leaps forward, runs forward, strides forward, goes as far forward as they possibly can to get that water spirit, and then jumps as far as they can away from battle. Get a little bit more of a lay of the battlefield before we do too much here, though. So Willow, move up that far. There's the water spirit. So if I move that far and then zealous leap, I can try and run to the water spirit this turn.
Oh, that's so annoying. The water spirit's one space out. Oh, I was certain I had the distance. Well, uh, we don't, evidently. Those are all really tightly packed there, though. Oh my god, Willow is one range short of being able to get that tree. This is a hollow tree, doesn't count as a tree. If I could have teleported 3D Shaggy to this tree, he could have moved up and then used a blaze and sent it through everyone. Great AoE effect right there. Uh, not being able to do that hurts. It's like exactly one out of my range in every direction. From here, it's one out. From here, it's one out. Obviously not from there either. Hmm. All with Splinter Blast. Probably not super relevant there. We're probably going to be using a lot of discuses through these enemies, if I had to guess. I can bring Ryan back to safety by that tree. Yeah, that would have been that would have been a, a really good way. Honestly, like Ryan is probably just gonna stand here and go guardian because I mean, what are their movements? Grab a swift action, you engage the target, force them to attack it. Uh smile, yeah, 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 watchman. Okay, so they actually can't get far enough to actually get towards Ryan here. Still don't really want him to take four to five magic damage. Yeah, Fortify Magic Damage isn't really blocked. So put him behind, like, a cover. God. God, that's gotten really bad. Alright, well, let's do what we can. Princess Grey... Can't really take a position that's actually useful. I can move up and use Roots and Shoots. Set up some plants for myself later. I'm going to take a free interfuse with the distant target on that mossy rock. And then I'm going to use roots and shoots to summon a bunch of plants here. Wild grass, wild grass, wild grass, wild grass, yeah, fine. Will any of them have the ability to do that? Hmm. 3D moves up as far as they can. Let's look at their ignite options. Oh, do plants count as an ignite option? No, they don't. That makes sense. Still an interfuse target though. Uh, Wild Grasp's five range. That doesn't count, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but that's diagonals. No, it's going to be like six range away or something like that. Calculating range of this game is a little weird. Always confuses me, at least. It's not actually weird. I'm just dumb. I'm still going to take control of this plant. But I don't think... Yeah, the Wild Grasp doesn't have anything in range. Wait, what? Hang on. Wild Grasp does have the Water Spirit in range, apparently. Why can't I... Any damage on spirits makes them peace. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I'm glad I couldn't do that. Although it was four magic damage. No, it's four damage damage. It's friend. Oh, it's friendly, so I can't target it. That makes sense. Oops. 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 Uh, fine. Take a slightly more advanced position as well, 3D. You're going to be important later. Uh, Willow, you just need to silk step. Get yourself ready for later. And we'll take an advanced position here with Ryan. Don't love it, but we'll do it. Welding comes on fields. Welding has so much movement. Ryan loses an armor, got shredded. Four damage from that. You are actually kidding me, right? Get him, Ryan. Uh, tier 1 Water Great Spear. Thank you. Places the Mushrock Spine, the Panther Nail. 
The phone's an action point when it works. A slightly less stunt damage, though. Okay. And then the idea is to pull you out here. You can sit here and still do that. We're going to have to take care of the welding as well. Batchby's coming in too. Missed an opportunity to call the wet mushroom spine. I may have to do that in the future. Well, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. Add the nail. No. No. Oh. Uh, God. 3D Shuggy. There's the debris. It's directly below that Watchman. Send it four spaces down. I like that. Although, without moving to here, I don't have range over it. I guess I can stand here in between the plants. Not particularly a defended position, though. God damn it. Princess, you're about to interfuse with a tree, so you're actually going into the gray plane. So you can stand basically wherever you want. Interfuse with that tree. We use tree call on this tree. Tree call. Instantly summon an ally to a space next to an interview's tree. Um, it it has limited. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <sighs> um. Should I be fine? Really? That's magic damage on the small yeah. I have no block against that. All right, we need to think. Big thonk hours begin. Okay, so... If I... 3D, what do you have unique? Yeah, it's just still the ignite only. Uh, small yay. Discus is six, four range. I might be able to kill the sommelier with that. Sixty-four and missed. Let's move you over and take out. The threat in our own backline. This discus doesn't even have the ability to reach up there. Does a hell of a number on, on Batchby at least. Still might be the best thing I even have the ability to do. I can wild grass Batchby away from everyone. Actually, that's pretty good. Ryan collapses forward. His right leg has gone silent, but frankly, the rest of his body is telling him enough. I, I can live through this. If I can get out now. It's just a leg after all. God damn it. That 
really sucks, like deeply. <laughs> like. All right, we'll uh, flank around this target. Kill you instantaneously. Princess, your discus is still out of range on that one. 3D. Three D. I can't actually see your effective range right now. Your ignite range is pretty far. I want to be able to see what your ignite range would be if you even went further, though. Oh well. Hmm. So the transform limb is going to be like an active negative, is uh, what I'm reading from this. Wow, the discus just straight up failed again. Thanks. Seventy-nine percent chance both of those times. I mean, that discus is still too far. Withdraw, roots and shoots. Splinter Blast on that one. I can move up and try and take control of that tree. And use you for just a Splinter Blast. That seems pretty tame. Bone Lance to kill the Somalier would be nice, though. Let's do that. Interfuse with this rubble, giving ourselves a bone lance. Somalier goes down. I'm the only thug on the board. Man, they have so much speed. Alright. Uh, Willow can get to the other side of that watchman. So some sort of attack on that would be pretty nice. This discus is out of range, which means this one won't be. Let's interfuse with this. That discus will end my turn, so I have the ability to move before that or use tree call or withdraw or anything like that if I want to. Even roots and shoots. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, actually, I probably just move back. Safety sake. Send the discus from this through to that watchman. Stop. Stop. Why do we miss? Thankfully, I set up a flank the entire time, so we're all good on that one. But why must we miss? Uh, the ignite's not going to be under it. So I cast the fire directly onto. Yeah, that's actually fine. Ignite there, use Fire Leash to move one space over. Free Shage finally gets a level here. Is a Bloodhorn Mystic. Can upgrade Ignite to be usable on tiles that they do not have debris on. Reduce the cost of all recruit jobs. When they take damage, reach into used object. No, we take the upgrade for Ignite there. Winter Shard. A great... God damn it! Wait, no. Wait, we can put this on Ryan. I thought we weren't going to be able to put this on Ryan because he wasn't here. Uh, okay. Artifact. Hobbles enemy on attack. Plus one stunt damage. It's an ice goddess that came from the stars. And the first winter shard is an axe she gave unto womankind. Their ever cold blade freezes blood even as they hew limbs. Uh, well... You know, thematically I would want to put this on a female character, but... Mechanics-wise, it definitely wants to go on. <sighs> Our missing leg. Unfortunately, I can't put it on the uh, the uh, the the rogue at all because the rogue can't wield weapons. <sighs> Once again, the night air belongs to the songs of the ordinary creatures. Everyone's still here, more or less. I hate a night battle. Keep knocking into trees. Ryan and 3D recount what they saw. A colossus striding silently through the silver fog. The others never saw more than the great banks of the mist separating them. They make a further search for signs of the giants passing, but are forced to camp, precious hours from sunrise, having found nothing. 
You're an enigma, little seed. Ryan plants it on a sun-blessed hillside in a bed of soft earth. Who knows what'll sprout? Hi, Gavari. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Somalia has extra health now. Uh -huh. Ryan is missing a leg. Let's have a look at how that's affected you. Aspects. Aspect, aspect, aspects. Got an aspect of no leg. Or ability. It's usually under ability, like there or something. Gears or something. Uh, I don't know if I can see. Ryan's adventure. Story. Hey, feeling weak. What lost? It's under aspects? Oh, yeah. Man, his right leg. Lost his right leg in battle. Well, it doesn't tell me that there's a modification as a result of it. Stat speed. Uh, where are we? We've got an extra 1.7 from having a left leg. So did I just lose a positive from having the other leg? 